like to go first? Who would like to give us some feedback? I think we have one table down here, do we? Yep, sure, go ahead. Being all the way at the back. All the way at the back. Stop talking the whole time. Okay. <laughs> must be something. Go ahead. Anybody? Someone, thanks. Uh, so I was talking about something that happens in South Taranaki, um, on, off the um, Forgotten Highway. It's called, it's in Whongamomana, and it's the Repug Republic Day. And, <laughs> hey, well, I'm speaking first. <laughs> So they have, um, they focus on what they're about. They have sheep running through the main street. Um, you have an opportunity to catch eels, crack a whip, um, and people flock there. They drive and it's really scenic and beautiful and windy roads. And then somebody's done, um, like on the old railway that goes through the hills there, you can, what's, what is it called? like a rail car that you cycle. Yeah. So four of you sit in it and it takes you through the valleys and it's, it's beautiful, it's exercise, it's a family um, thing to do together and it's scenic and it's, yeah, and it's really successful and people go there for the event every year. I, I'm fascinated, how do you market that? Come for the eels, stay for the whips kind of thing? Uh, <laughs> yeah, yeah. No, I mean, that, but that is clearly the kind of thing that doesn't fit neatly in any particular bucket, but because it's like, it's just us. And we figured out how to, we, we keep, you know, mashing new stuff up. I think that's kind of wonderfully weird and awesome. So yeah, well done. How do you, how do you think people feel at the end of that day? Confused. <laughs> What's the feeling? <laughs> <laughs> well, I was brought up on a dairy farm, so I felt quite at home, but um, I'd say if you're from a big city, it would be quite, you know, unique and an eye opener. And I think for tourists as well, if you're not from New Zealand, it would be pretty cool. Great, thank you, great example. I think we have another one over here. Thank you. Uh, we've got a couple over here. A couple, great. Um, yeah, maybe first... just if you could step away from the microphone, the, the okay. speaker. Yeah. <laughs> oh, okay. Um, so uh, I'm with the Nelson Arts Festival, and uh, we do an event every year that's part of the festival called the Mass Parade and Carnival. Um, nobody else in the country does it. It's the biggest walking parade in the Southern Hemisphere. 3,000 to 5,000 kids get involved, walk through the street wearing masks every year, and there's a big party carnival after it. It's been going for about 20 years. Uh, no one else in the country knows about it, uh, and you would never be able to get it out of the calendar in Nelson. It is just massive. So that is unique and it's crazy, and we don't even know why it works, but it does every year. <laughs> yeah. Great. Thank you. And we could technically call that community cosplay kind of stuff, yeah. right? Yeah. Everybody's we wearing masks. We try and avoid the cosplay thing because okay. that's a little weird, but... <laughs> <laughs> oh, come on. <laughs> it has a different theme every year, you know, so this year it's We Are The World. We've had myths and legends and all those sorts of things. So it's, you know, it's a massive thing for those kids. Yeah. Great. And oh, I think we have one more. Um, hello. I can, is this okay? Yeah. Um, so, just apologies in advance for my Scottish accent. Oh, don't um, apologise. What's I would never apologise, actually. <laughs> um, so, at the moment, I'm with Tauranga Council, but before this, obviously, I'm from Scotland, and I've done lots of massive things, including the Edinburgh Fringe. But one of the things that we do that kind of fits into this category is a few of us have got together and we do a little festival in the Highlands. And the festival doesn't take a traditional format it goes around the highlands in a roving format so we take people to different areas in the in the highlands which celebrates its uniqueness so we might do pop-up events by the side of a loch or in a little church and then we have little hidden areas and we do food that celebrates the area so people get a real connection to where they are and it brings people to that area and they absolutely love it great thank you Excellent. Thank you. Okay, great feedback. We have one more for you, um, which is the next question from Peter. How do we find or encourage more of these authentic, unique expressions of community ID identity through events? So if you could, again, consider that and take three minutes and just think about work between you and think how, could we, how can we answer that question? And I'll come back to you in three minutes. Off you go. Thank you. Just getting some water. Okay, I've got somebody over here. If you can throw the catch box. Throw that catch box. Oh, there you go. Very close. Well done. Thanks. Um, one of the things we did in Wanganui, we decided that um, we'd like some more events during the off-season. We want to spread some events out. Um, and we also wanted to try and build some event 
capacity, if you like, in terms of event management. Um, so we held a Den of Dragons style event. So we went out to the community and said, okay, pitch your ideas to us. There was quite a um, reasonable application form asking for a top line budget and some key questions so it wasn't just throwing an idea out there. It actually meant you had to do a bit of thinking about how you'd make it happen. Um, and so from that we had 23 applications from the community. We put six entrants up against a den of dragons um, of professional event managers, some of whom are members. And of those six, the winner is supposed to go ahead with a uh, visual arts symposium in Whanganui in October. And we've also held a youth games, which is a junior version of masters games, and a river city park up event. So we, um, there was a small amount of financial sponsorship from the council but I worked with sponsors not to sponsor the Den of Dragons event but to provide in-kind sponsorship for services to get the winning event up and underway. So it was being a little bit creative and then we left them to it and provided support and advice when they asked. Great, great, thank you. Yeah, good, good example of it. I mean, Dana Dragons, Pecha Kucha, you know, debate. There's about 12 of them, uh, Meeting Design Institute talk about. So there's quite a few different, you know, themes you can go through. But it's interesting to hear that. Have you heard of, have you heard of fuck up nights? No. <laughs> <laughs> you can say that here. In I can Dubai, say that here, I'm not yeah. allowed to say that in Dubai. Interesting. But, yeah. So along the lines of, you know, Pecha Kucha, Pecha Kucha, um, started in Mexico City in like 2012. Uh, what it was is they got a bunch of like mostly business folks to come in and talk about their epic fails. Yeah. Because here's the thing, we're all very happy to talk about our successes, um, but talking about failure is kind of hard. But we actually learn a lot from failure. Yep. So fuck up night was this you know, opportunity for people to come and talk about it. Sort of, usually it's in a business context. It's not like personal. It's not like yeah, sort yeah. of a group therapy yeah. kind of thing. Yeah, I but shot that, somebody. Yeah, but yeah. that can be kind of fun. And it sort of de, you know, uh, it just it gives you a different yeah, perspective on Toastmasters, failure. Toastmasters, we have a roast night where we roast people. Yeah. So it's a kind of, yeah, highlighting your failures. So yeah, cool. Anybody else got other examples? Yeah, just here, please. Or I could throw that, throw that box, go on. Oh, there he goes, heads up. <laughs> well done, rugby boy. One of the discussions we had on the team is that we always, with these ideas, we come up across bureaucracy from council and also lots of paperwork and health and safety and everything. One of the discussions was to all the council should have yes day, where they say yes, basically. <laughs> so. They can't say no, they can't say yeah, no. What I a like great that. idea. <laughs> I like that. <laughs> yes only. Yeah. Um, you know, I'm going to talk about breaking the rules in my breakout session, but sometimes you got to, maybe the, th the thing is you find somebody, I, I can't do this, but you could, and maybe it's, it's finding that person who's maybe outside of, you know, the, 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 the chain of command, as it were, that can maybe make some stuff happen. Because after the fact, you go, oh, well, that's what you're talking about. Then, then all of a sudden, now it's like, oh, well, of course we should have been, we should be doing that. But I get it. You know, but I think that a yes day, that could be really dangerous. But I think I, I love the notion, so. Good. Any other comments, ideas? Yep, one over here. Thank you. Well done. Oh, it's very well up to now. Oh, you, you broke it. <laughs> go ahead, oh, give it a go. Here you go. Oh. Are you working? You're working. It's working now? Okay, wonderful. We have an annual event in Aotea Square, which was called Unwrapping Christmas, and now it's called Summer in the Square. And a couple of years, we put up blackboards, and just with a random question, what do you want? What makes you happy? And a lot of people came down and just wrote their ideas on the board. And yeah, there was worry that, are oh, they just going to be tagged and no one's really going to care. But there were people coming down daily to see what the question was, put their idea, idea down, and it actually just exposed us producers, account managers, to what our community and our local instant community wanted. And it was so simple, cheap, effective. And we just um, were able to basically tap into all, all these new ideas. It was fantastic. Brilliant. Yeah, great, simple. Good idea, yeah. Thank Absolutely. you. Okay, any other comments? Yeah, sorry, just behind. I'm not, uh, I'm not a big user of social media, but um, I live on uh, Waiheke Island, and there's loads of events. It, it's an event island. But what I love is the community um, have a really strong social media trading page, community page. And if you want something to happen, you literally put a, something out there on the community page, 
and you get thousands of responses. But that's also backed up with things like, you know, like in Rocky Bay, for instance, they have cocktails for the first Friday of every month. So you know, you know everybody through the social media, but then you get together face to face and sort of make it happen. Mm -hmm. And people really make it happen. I think, you know, how do we find that? Well, that's using these social media, smaller communities to make that happen and then extend that out. Extended that. Good. Great. Thank you. Thank you. Great comments. I've been to Waiheke. What? It, uh, I stayed overnight at an Echo Farm there. It was the blackest sky and the biggest Milky Way and the Southern Cross. Very, very special. Yeah. Very cool. Thank you. Okay. Thank you, Peter. Oh, one more question here. Just if somebody can throw. Who's good on the? Oh, there's two coming at you. There you go. Oh. <laughs> um, Ten burpees. Yeah. Well, I think a big one is uh, the ability to give back. So uh, if you look around this room, there's a lot of knowledge, a lot of wealth. I've been in the event industry myself for 20 years. Um, and I think when you get young people coming through, you've actually got to uh, take them on board, share a little bit of that knowledge, give them two or three hours of your time, uh, and help them maybe not make the same mistakes you did in the first 10 years. Uh, you can probably steer them in that right direction. So if you want new stuff to come through, uh, you've got to talk to those young people. And I generally find that most of the events that we're involved in, uh, the best ideas come from the 18-year-old that's showing up been there for a day and goes, what about? And everyone just turns to them and goes, what a brilliant idea. How did I not think of that? Yeah, yeah. You know, so I think we've got to share some of that knowledge, otherwise it just gets lost. Yep. Thank you. Very great fun. great comment. I think kids kids have that sort of unquaverable belief in themselves. There's a great story about a, a young kid who was drawing away and a teacher came over and said, oh, Sophie, what are, you, what are you drawing there? And she said, oh, I'm drawing a picture of God. And the teacher said, oh, that's amazing because nobody knows what God looks like. And Sophie said, they will in a moment. So it's just a matter of that ultimate belief and allowing young people to have a go. Could we have another couple of questions, or a question just came through on the system just before we go to, to lunch. OK, this is a classic question. The old Tinder, eh? Yeah, yeah. So just a quick, a quick story. I was at an event in Dubai, and I thought it was a little bit strange because I was there with my keypads trying to tell people about these keypads. And I met these three real, really nice older ladies. And I was explaining to them, and they were school teachers. And I explained to them about these keypads. And I said, this is what they do. And they listened to me. And at the end, they stopped. And they said, um, why are you telling us this? And I said, well, because I'm here to sell keypads and tell people about keypads. And I said, what are you here for? And they said, oh, we're trying to find a husband. And what these people had done is they had joined Tinder dating or singles dating with business dating. And it turned into a complete mayhem because people, people didn't know what they were doing or why they were there. Some people were there for business and some people were there for other types of business. So, yeah, it was, uh, don't do it is my, is my advice. But there is an app that does that, that, that helps people network. And Julius has just stepped out, but I'll try and get it to you and get the information out there. There is an app to allow delegates to connect. Julius, do you remember what it is? I'm trying to remember. There was Spot Me, obviously, but there is there an app now for people to network? Grip. Grip.io. Grip.io. G-R-I-P.io. Great. For, for delegates to network with each other. Cool. We're going to do a bit of networking later. We don't have time before lunch, but we will after. Later on, we're going to try and do a bit of networking. And there was one other question for Peter. Oh. A nice yes. question on your, uh, on your. I, I am third generation Japanese American. My father was born in San Francisco. Uh, his parents were born uh, in uh, near Yokohama, Japan. So yeah, I'm very tall for a Japanese. I think I looked more Asian when I was a kid uh, there uh, as well. But yes, uh, thank you for asking. Uh, and thank you for pronouncing my name correctly, Kageyama. So yeah, well done. Great. Uh, oh, as far as yeah, uh, influence with Japan. I was I was an exchange student to, uh, to, to Japan um, in high school, and as a half Asian kid growing up in the Midwest of the United States, I had this notion: it's like I'm very different, and I, I was. I appeared different, and I had sort of different sort of background, and I thought, oh well, I must be sort of you know this exotic Asian kind of thing. Well, going to Japan, nothing qu more quickly disabused me of that notion. Says, nope, you're an American uh, there uh, as well. So that was very good in that sense, and I think that's sort of one of the lessons that America. It's like, you know, we, look, we can look very different, but we are actually all sort of, hopefully, we still remain one sort of community and one sort of country in that sense. But yes, thank you for asking. Great. Thank you.